The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalo Valyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session with me, Koki Christopher Tidwondri, a teacher of physics. Today we shall be studying physics in form 4 and we are going to start right away by correcting the assignments that we had in the last lesson. Here are the questions. Give a daily life example of a situation where interference of waves is experienced. That is the assignment that we have. I mean, the question we have for the assignment. Okay? Right, so the response. We have a case like in a thin film of soap bubble, which reflects the spectrum of beautiful colors. When illuminated by natural or artificial light sources. So it will make uh, a thin film of soap bubble. It will reflect a spectrum of beautiful colors when you sign natural light on it, or when you sign artificial light on it. Then, when light is selected from a film of oil floating on water, it also has the potential to produce the same effect. Our focus is lesson 22, and we are looking at sound waves, its production, and how to transmit it through production, and Transmission of sound waves. Here's the plan of the lesson that we have for today. We are going to have some objectives for the lesson. The prerequisites, we shall examine a real life situation. We shall look at the lesson activity. Then, some exercises. After that, we shall have a summary of the lesson and some assignments for you to find out how well you have understood the lesson of today. Let's go right into the objective. So by the time that we go to the end of this uh, learning activity, we are expected to be able to define sound waves or uh, state at least uh, two sources of sound. Then also explain how sound waves are transmitted through a medium. And then you also expect to show that sound waves uh, are mechanical waves. For predicates that we need to you know about longitudinal waves. Now, define de longitudinal waves and give an example. So, what are longitudinal waves? Longitudinal wave is a wave uh, whose direction of motion is parallel to the direction of vibration of the particles of the medium, which means that the direction in which the wave travels. Is parallel to the direction in which the particles of the medium are vibrating. If a wave matches such a definition, they will call that wave longitudinal wave. Example we have sound wave. The other examples anyway, but we just ask for one example of longitudinal wave. Okay? Now look at this real life situation. On the photo, we have two astronauts. And we are asked to explain whether it is possible for these astronauts on the moon to communicate without walking talking. That is uh, our last question for today. 
I expected by the time that we go to the end of this learning activity, we must have acquired enough information to be able to explain in an informed manner whether or not uh, this astronaut will be able to communicate without their working talking. Now on to activities. Try to drum and pluck a guitar string in turn. You can see on the left there's a figure, that's a drum, and on the right we have guitar string. After a few seconds, gently place your hand on each of them and explain what you feel. Our response. So when each is struck, a unique sound is produced. When you strike a drum, a unique sound is produced. When you strike the guitar string, a unique sound is produced. When the hand is placed on it, the body of each instrument is felt vibrating. The vibrations in turn set air molecules into vibration, producing a unique sound. So that's what happens when those two activities are, are, are carried out. You strike a drum and the uh, guitar string. Okay? Now, sources of sound. When objects or systems vibrate, they produce sound, which can be audible or inaudible, depending on the frequency and the medium of transmission. When objects are struck, when you strike a drum, it produces sound. When objects or systems vibrate, the sound can be audible or inaudible, which means that the sound as such well can either kill your ears or you may not be able to hear them with your ears, depending on the frequency. And also the medium in which the sound has to be transmitted. Those are key factors that come into play. So first of sound includes this. They call it a tuning fork. It's a tuning fork, a vibrating tuning fork. It is not vibrating, it is not a source of sound, but if it is vibrating, it is a source of sound. Then uh, a flock guitar string. If you flock a guitar string and release it, it will vibrate and produce sound. As it is vibrating, it is a source of sound. The inside is not vibrating, it's actually not a sort of sound. And they will also have a vibrating speaker cone. So speakers have cones that vibrate and set layers of air adjacent to them into a uh, vibration. When the speaker cone is vibrating, it is a sort of sound. When the speaker cone is not vibrating, it is not a sort of sound. So here we have the three complete examples, there are many other examples. So what is sound? Sound is a form of energy that requires a material or medium to travel through. It so means that without a medium, sound cannot travel. Without material, sound cannot travel. Sound needs a material to travel through. Sound is a form of energy that requires a material or a medium to travel through. Therefore, sound waves are mechanical waves. Why? So because mechanical waves are waves that need material or medium to, tra to travel through. That's why we say sound waves is mechanical in nature. Sound waves are equal on signal in nature. We just uh, explained a while ago what long signal waves are. That the way uh, travel in direction parallel to the direction in which the particles of the medium vibrate. Take note. Therefore, um, sound are mechanical. So sound waves are on signal in nature, sound waves are mechanical in nature, and the reason for which we say they are mechanical in nature, I have explained to you. Transmission of sound waves. How are sound waves transmitted? Sound travels as a wave or as a disturbance of the particles of the medium. It travels as a wave or as a disturbance of the particles of the medium. 
So when the musical system is playing, the vibrating cone of the speaker produces sound, which disturbs air layers. It's just a sound will travel as a disturbance, as a wave, or as a disturbance of the medium, or the particles of the medium. And when the musical system is set a plane, the vibrating cone of the speaker produces sound which disturbs air layers. To understand how sound travels, look at uh, the air layers before the sound is produced. Is this how they look like? Air layers are really phased out. And then uh, those air layers are not just evenly spaced out, uh, they are constant like tiny particles, actually. Now, when the music is on, the speaker vibrates and air layers are deceptive. So look at the cone and uh, this arrow indicates the cone, vibration of the cone. And then you can see uh, an ear at the other at the end that serves as a receptor of the sound. And then what happens? Okay, when the speaker vibrates, it sets the layers of air around it into vibration. So the speaker does not move, but yet the layers of air are set into vibration. So this is what a sound wave for continuous sounds vibration, like. But what does a sound wave look like? Well, the air through which the sound wave oh, is traveling looks something this like this. But if you want another it, it, visual it, 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 representation it, of the sound, we can hook this speaker up to an oscilloscope and it gives us this graph. Behave. We say that this shape represents the sound wave because if we focus vibration. on a single molecule of okay. air, we see that it moves back and forth just so like a sine of or cosine graph. Actually said the horizontal axis here represents time and the vibration. vertical axis can be thought of as representing the displacement of that air molecule as it oscillates back and forth. The center line here represents so from the equal and position or undisturbed is, position in the same direction of the If we turn up the volume, the we see that the oscillations become larger oh, and the sound becomes traveling. louder. The maximum displacement of the air molecule from its undisturbed position is called Just the amplitude. The Be careful, the amplitude is not the length of the entire displacement. It's only the maximum displacement measured from the equilibrium position. Another key idea is the period of a sound wave. Most of these are concepts that have been handled to be the time it takes for an air molecule amplitude. to fully move you know back and forth one lesson. time. We call this back and forth motion okay, a cycle. What about we measure the period in seconds. So, so the period is the number of, of the wind, seconds it uh, takes travel for one cycle. The we use the letter capital T uh, to represent the period. Of of if we decrease the, the period, the okay. time it takes for... So a snapshot of the vibration system at any given time is below look at it a snapshot of the vibrating system consider mo mostly the particles the first section of the shot to the saw where you saw or layers of air like this vibrating to and fro the same direction as there's no wave travel and if you take a snapshot of that particular uh, portion of the clip you observe uh, that it looks something like this so the figure cone is here the ear is that way and then this is how the layers of air in between them look at any given instant. So they take an instantaneous so snapshot. So there are areas that use one that we call compression, where the particles of the air are bonded together, and uh, we call that area compression. And there are areas where the layers of air are uh, phased out, areas of low pressure, which we call rarefaction. While well, the missing compression here we see, and uh, Rather function there with capital R. Please take note because we will do some basic analysis of that anyway. So, now compression is a reason where the vibrating particles are close to each other. It is a reason of high pressure or density. And the rather function is a reason where the vibrating particles are far from each other. It is a region of low pressure or density. So these particles are talking about here are particles of air. Okay? So, now this is uh, 
our our waveform how it looks like. So this peak here represents an area of high pressure or maximum pressure. Uh, we, have, we have called such areas compression, and this is how they look on a particle diagram. Okay, so any area where there is a high compression, so the particles are bunched up, forms a compression and corresponds to this area of maximum pressure. Normally, when we draw a waveform, we call the magnetic crest, and uh, there are these areas of low pressure that found midway between two compressions. So the area of low pressure called the Murara refraction and they correspond to the solve when we are doing a simple waveform. Okay. I'm sure from what is depicted here on the uh, waveform, we can analyze a number of issues. Okay. So minimum pressure with the Murara function. And uh, this is how it looks like. So Compression, rather function, compression, rather function, compression, rather function. Distance between two uh, compression is a wavelength. Distance between two successive, sorry, two successive compression there. Yeah? Because this one like this is a compression, compression, compression. From here to here is distance between two compression and it's not a wavelength. For it to be equivalent to a wavelength, it must be the distance between two consecutive or two successive compressions, like from here to here. So this might equivalent to a wavelength, okay? And uh, anyway, just the same way that we are saying that the distance between two successive prior functions corresponds to a wavelength. Okay. Now, this time between one compression and a rather function corresponds to half a wavelength. This is in, it, it's important for you because you can be asked to use the calculation as you prepare to write your GCE exam or even class exams in form 4. Now, so this is a short formula we can use. So, compression, the distance between two compression, for two compression, we say the wavelength, the same as the distance between two successive rather functions. We also say uh, they are equivalent to one wavelength lambda. In the same manner, the distance from one uh, compression to a rather function is half wavelength or half lambda, and the distance between uh, from one rather function to one compression successive rather function to next. Uh, uh, subjective uh, compression will give you half a wavelength. Please, this information is really useful as it will help make your calculations easy whatever you have them and also ease the understanding of uh, this uh, subject we are looking at. Okay, so look at uh, the diagram in front of us. We have the Bell jar experiment. So you can look very well. Uh, here's the diagram. You can see an electric bell. Uh, elastic cord, thick wall, glass barrel jar, there's a metal plate, and there's a pipe here that is leading us to a vacuum pump. Okay? Then up here you have a battery, a resistor, and then a switch the X. For the procedure to describe the barrel jar experiment, the electric bell is suspended by a slit. Inside a barrel jar filled to grease to a flat metal plate which has an outlet connected to a vacuum pump. Okay, so this is the diagram. The barrel jar is here connected to an elastic cord. Okay, there are reasons for all of this. And then there is this uh, nice circuit that leads right uh, way out the signal uh, set there. So that when we see through this switch, current can flow around and cause this our uh, barrel begin to rain okay now we observe that when the pump is switched on the sound gradually really becomes center and center until no sound is heard when all the air has been removed but the hammer can still be seen hitting the ground what are we saying is that normally when the switch is closed and there is air inside the barrel jar we hear the hammer of the bell or we feel the sound of the bell our eyes can also see through the bell jar since it's transparent, okay? 
So if we just look through the diagram, we can see the buried jar with our eyes. Once there is air inside, uh, and the fridge is closed, the, this hammer will keep striking. We can see the hammer striking with our eyes and see the bell ringing. But the instant that the vacuum pump is activated, air starts being pumped out of this bell jar and uh, the intensity of the sound that we hear from the bell and the hammer striking the bell starts dying down. Until one point we say it was just no sound when inside this bell jar becomes a complete vacuum. That is the vacuum pump sucks out all the air and there's no longer any air inside. That is what the observation is telling us about. Now, as air is allowed to enter into the jar again, the intensity of the sound starts increasing until the loud sound is heard. If the switch remains closed, you still see the hammer striking, and then uh, we let air back into the bell jar. As the air is coming in, the intensity of the sound will start increasing again and again and again and again until get to mountain intensity. And what does that tell us? It tells us uh, the fact that the bell can still be seen vibrating when no sound is heard. It's an indication that light waves travel through a vacuum. That is an air free space because a vacuum is an air free space. But the fact that we had no sound means that sound does not travel through a vacuum. That's our conclusion. Therefore, sound waves need a material medium for their transmission. Okay? Now, which are the precautions? What measures do we take to avoid uh, errors in the experiment? The hammer should be as close to the gong as possible. That's the precaution. All the air should be completely removed from the bell jar to be sure that we have a vacuum. That's in the process uh, of sucking out the air to create a vacuum. To ensure that actually vacuum is created by taking out all the air completely from the bell jar. <laughs> Now exercise, what is, what is sound? Name two forms of sound. Our second response. Sound is a form of energy that requires a material or a medium to travel through. That's what we defined a while ago. An example of a, a source of sound, a vibrating of guitar, or a playing guitar, or a playing flute, a playing drum, etc. There are a host of them. So for exercises, when sound waves travel through air, the air layers are disturbed, forming alternate regions of compression and rarefaction. The disturbance between a compression and a rare and a near uh, rarefaction is two meters. Question. Take the meaning of the underlying term. You can see the underlying term there, compression, rather function. Secondly, calculate the wavelength of the wave. We have acquired information from the lesson so far that you can use to uh, do this exercise, okay? Taking it at this point, you can always even pause the video and try to do the exercise yourself before coming back to it. So state the meaning of the underlying terms, a compression is a region of high pressure or high density on the waveform. That's the compression. What about the rather function? The rather function is a region of low pressure or low density on the waveform. Now calculate the wavelength of the wave. We learned that the distance between one compression and a the next rate of function is actually half wavelength, which means that the wavelength is equal to two times uh, the distance from one compression to a rate of function. In that case, we have our wavelength as two times two meters. That gives us four meters as the wavelength of the wave in this particular uh, situation. Now, as our response to the new life, the, the, the real life situation explain whether 
for now the it's a small uh, erosion explain whether it is possible for these astronauts on the moon to communicate without their working talkie okay just a smaller spelling error something like that okay yeah that's the relaxation we had to solve okay so the response they cannot communicate without their working talkies and what's the reason this is because there is no air in the moon and sound waves cannot travel through the vacuum those are facts that we have uh, tried to make very clear in our lesson the moon is a vacuum there is no air a vacuum means an air free space and for sound for communication uh, with sound to go so successfully then we need uh, air we need a material medium which more known as the air can be liquid can be a solid it can just be the air so in this case without the working topic it's, 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 it's impossible what the working topic does actually is that it converts the sound wave into uh, EM wave that can travel to the vacuum and see we have some layers of trapped air inside the astronaut's bed that's how they can communicate with each other with the help of the working talking okay now in summary sound is a form of energy that requires a material or medium to travel through sound is transmitted in the form of a wave hence it is a mechanical wave as demonstrated by the Berger experiment sound waves are produced by vibrating objects or systems and can be audible or in or which means you can hear them or you may not be able to hear it depending on the frequency sound waves are longitudinal waves and can travel through all three states of matter liquid solid and gases and just to highlight that they travel through the different uh, states of matter at different speeds they, they, are, they travel very fast in solid or uh, they travel less faster in liquid and they have the least speed when they are traveling through gases when the sound will travel through the air, the layers are the shape forming alternate regions of compression and rarefaction. The distance between two conjugative compressions or rarefaction is equal to the wavelength of the wave. That is what we established. The distance between a compression and a rarefaction is equal to half the wavelength of the wave. Those are facts that we have sought to establish. Now, as our assignment for you to take home and to find out how we have understood the lesson of today sound wave is a dynamic mechanical wave when you travel through air the distance between conjugative compression is five meters state the meaning of the underlying term calculate the wavelength of the wave okay and with that we actually at the end of our learning activity for today in which we do references from uh, other level physics and modern approach by Mbako Ivo uh, from Digest Publishers School and then standard other level physics by Chan Philip Dumber et al. and there is also other level physics uh, by Becha De Meza Becha uh, and the camp publishers. Our next lesson will be on property of sound wave. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen.